The Pro Tools Matrix is a versatile modular audio interface with exceptional ADDA conversion, featuring remote controllable microphone preamps recallable from Pro Tools or Yukon. It is the centerpiece of a modern audio studio, a digital patch bay with massive connectivity, including Dante, MADI, AES-CBU, and DigiLink for Pro Tools. The Pro Tools Matrix features an incredibly powerful studio monitor section, which can be customized to provide ultimate flexibility, optimized for the way you work. From stereo music to 5.1 commercial post, all the way up to large-scale immersive film mixing with Dolby Atmos. Once the monitor profile has been customized, it's simple to manage source inputs, fold downs, cue mixes, and speakers directly from a Yukon-based control surface like the S6. Let's start by opening DadBand, which is the network-connected software application that allows us to manage the Pro Tools matrix. From the Settings menu, choose Monitor Profile. To access a configuration for the monitor section, we're going to define using the available I.O. from our matrix. Make sure that Enable Monitor is ticked and that your identified unit is displayed above. Let's start by creating some source inputs to our control room. Right-click in the window and click Add Monitor. This first monitor is going to be our primary control room, so let's label it as such. Single-click to give this first monitor a more descriptive name. Next, let's set the monitor in Yukon modes by right-clicking on the control room. Since this is going to be our primary control room, let's set the monitor mode to master, which allows us to send other monitors defined as cues, such as talent mixes, into our master control room to ensure the talent is getting exactly what we expect. Under Yukon mode, let's choose control room. This allows us to use the primary monitor encoder on the S6 or even the Pro Tools dock to attenuate and optionally mute the main mix. The monitors A through D represent four additional monitors which are accessible from the S6 monitoring page. These can be cue mixes, feeds to studio loudspeakers, or even local engineer headphones. Expand the disclosure triangle on control room to reveal outputs, sources, fold down, and meters. Let's add a few sources. Right click on sources and choose add new source. Again, let's label our new set to better describe the input. We'll make a source for our Pro Tools HDX system. Let's say we're working primarily in 5.1. So right click and under set group format, we can choose from an array of different widths. Now we need to tell the monitor where the six channels we want to assign from our Pro Tools HDX source are coming from. Click on assign channel starting with left by right clicking. And now you can see all of the possible hardware inputs which this path can be fed from. We want to choose PHD1 since we have our HDX system connected via DigiLink to both the primary and secondary ports on the matrix. I'm going to opt to assign my 5.1 path as SMPTE, but I could just as easily choose Film Order. Now let's label all the channels so we know what we're looking at in the patch bay. Finally, if we want to trim any of the channel inputs, we could do it from here. If we right-click back on the Sources header of our control room, the source select mode determines whether these will be switched or summed together by default. We will explore this option in more detail in some of the later videos. For the time being, I would recommend setting this to summed. Let's add a second control room input. This one's going to be the primary stereo monitor input from the Mac OS. If we need to audition iTunes, SoundMiner, AudioFinder, or any other source, we can simply connect it using Dante Virtual Soundcard. This assumes that you have the IP audio option installed in your matrix unit, which is a simple daughter board that can be added to the main unit. Right-click on Sources once again and choose Add New Source. I'm going to call this source Max, since that's really where it's coming from. It's stereo, so that's good. Now let's assign the source. I'm going to choose Dante IP channels 1 and 2 for the left and right channels of the Mac source. Dante Virtual Soundcard is a fantastic application for Mac or PC that you can get from Audinit.com, which allows you to create a virtual core audio or ASIO driver to send to from your applications. It's a simple $29 license that can be downloaded and authorized directly from the Audinet website. Once you've got it installed and licensed, choose the network interface, the latency, and number of channels, then click Start. Now we can simply assign our primary Mac output to feed Dante Virtual Soundcard. The final step with this Dante-based Mac control room source is to patch the channels on the Dante network. Audinet makes a free application called Dante Controller that you can also download from their website. This application allows us to manage all of the Dante inputs and outputs on the network, which includes Dante Virtual Soundcard and the Matrix hardware. We need to create a patch from the output of the Mac Dante Virtual Soundcard, which here shows up as MBX, which is the computer name, and route it to the input of the Matrix. We've now established our connection. 
Back in the monitor profile window of Dadman, we've got two source inputs now, so let's create a set of monitor speakers to listen through. Right-click on Outputs and choose Add New Set. I'm going to rename these to reflect the near-field speakers that I have, which are PMCs. Let's set the group format again to 5.1 and assign the output hardware for our speakers. Since these are analog speakers, I'm going to use the DA option card channels 1 through 6 for my 5.1 PMC near fields. Again, I'm using SMPTE format, which is why center is assigned to channel 3 instead of 2. Lastly, if I need to trim any of the individual speakers, for example, the subwoofer, I can dial it in here in hundredths of a dB. Let's next create a fold down preset so that we can easily go from 6 channels to 2 channels. Click on the fold down tab, then right click in the window to access an array of preset fold down matrices. We're going to choose 5.1 to stereo, which, if you click on it, you can also go in here and tweak any of the equations. Let's head back to the Groups tab and right-click on the fold-down where we can apply the preset for 5.1 to stereo that we just defined. If you happen to be using external meters, such as those from TC Electronic or DK, we can easily send a parallel output from our control room to feed into those meters digitally. Right-click on the meters and choose Add New Set. This is a 5.1 DK meter that I'm feeding via AES EBU, so let's just call it DK. For the channel assignments, I'm going to use the first six channels of the built-in AES EBU on the enclosure of the matrix. Lastly, by right-clicking on the meters, I can select either pre- or post-fader operation. We've just scratched the surface of working with monitor profiles in the matrix. In the upcoming videos, we will expand on working with sources, creating Q mixes, and controlling these sources via Yukon.